we'll look in this scenario in which Denmark forms an empire. And we're going to say they directly annex Greenland back into them in the Faroe Islands. And any other islands I may be missing that's like that. And with Iceland's military of zero people and unarmed police fighting back as hard as they can. With volcanoes erupting. But no, doesn't work. And they fall. But who doesn't fall to Denmark? Now, Denmark decides to do a bit of exploring. So they say, well, the Baltics look Nordic enough, right? This is legitimately what they say. But are they right? Probably not. Is Denmark probably stronger? Probably, yes. But do they probably spend more money? Yes. Does Denmark cakewalk them? Yes. You may think they did, but really all the troops went to Tallinn and then they discussed what to do when they do this. And they give a minor defense, but they're out of resources. And nobody wants to give them it, cause, well, they don't. Sad. This is why you shouldn't be like Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. Well, it could be worse. It could have been Russia. Or Germany, or, mm, yeah, a lot of other nations. Could have also been Belarus. With the German invasion breaking out. And in six hours, Germany falls. Just kidding, they don't have that kind of respect. Because, well, Germany is better off. Or so they think. They think that a weak Denmark can't do a dent to them. But Denmark infiltrated Germany with one billion, one million spies. Wait, does Denmark even have a million people? Yes, it does. It's three million or something. Not even sure, but 82 million is definitely an advantage for Germany with them moving into northern Germany. Germany launches a successful counteroffensive, kicking Denmark out, but they left their ports vulnerable. Ooh, they made a mistake. As Denmark takes the initiative and moves in and takes over the coast. With Germany being exhausted and its inf infrastructure being demolished, it manages to lose its industrial area. But don't worry, it takes it back. But its initiative that it took didn't really do much. And Germany pushes south and encircles Poland. Not Poland, Berlin. With them moving back into the industrial area, but at this point, Germany capitulated. So let's see. The and forming a secret pact. This is where the war breaks out. They declare war on Sweden. They're about to send their troops in. Because their troops are already sent there. But about to cross into it. Turns out. They already knew this was coming. Turns out. But Denmark still doesn't realize this. But y'all know it. Wait, that's a weird way of speaking. But anyways, let's continue. Let's continue. But then they call the UK, their trusty old friend, to join in. What are they going to do? Hmm. Let's see. What does Britain do? Probably like when Poland got invaded. Nothing. And pretends they did a lot. With the invasion of southern Sweden being a success, Norway, Denmark, and the UK jump in. Not Denmark, Finland. Denmark, Norway. Sweden, Finland. Like how not many countries have land in it. Like Finland. But there are more, I'm pretty sure. Wait, is there? <laughs> land. Well, there was Finland. Netherlands. That works. But with the initiative in Norway having been took. Don't worry. The Britain lands in and pushes them back. Oh, wait. They don't get fully kicked out. So now they start the invasion of Finland, and they land in southern Finland. They think, oh, this is a good idea. But no, they get kicked out. So they start a new offensive. Britain, shores, very defended, you might think. But they are in a fortress. <laughs> and they move in. They even donate Northern Ireland to, uh, to Ireland. And they move into 
many areas, but Britain, strong nation, glorious nation, pushes them back, but not out. But this gives them time to focus on Norway as Britain's distracted there, but then they can't do that, so they land in Swabbled Islands, if that's even what it's called, but I'm just saying, I think, I'm pretty sure it's called. With them landing in northern Norway, Norway is surprised when they run down the mountains, up and down over, I guess. But Sweden and Finland make some pushbacks. Sweden over here, and Finland over there. But is this really enough, guys? They may be pushed back and forth and back and forth. But, like, that's what war is. And Stockholm is captured as Swedish forces were distracted in Norway. Swedish forces try to push back to their capital, but they're left with knocking where they want to go. One problem with this is, well, there's a lot. And they move in deeper into northern Sweden and northern Finland. With Finland all on its own. And with the Finnish people wanting to join Denmark for some reason. A revolt breaks out and Finland is captured. And then this happens. And then many more things happen, including the fall of Britain. Britain just gives up because they're depressed now. And now let's see how the peace treaty went. The Treaty of Stockholm. Goals, expansion into the Baltics, expansion into Germany, expansion into all the Nordic nations and parts of Britain. Even more than they wished for, because Britain was stubborn. And they create a puppet in Britain, they have a puppet of Rhine Rhine. Yeah, it's called Rhineland. I probably shouldn't try to make stupid names of it. But they got a few enemies. Mainly Germany and Russia wanting to take Finland and Baltics. Along with Bella Groves. And that's all for today's video. Please like and subscribe. If this video gets 10 likes, I will do a scenario in which the Danish Empire collapses in on itself. And that's all for today's video. Wild Mamper out, but please subscribe. Because our goal is 2,800 subscribers by July 1st. And if I get to 2,500 subscribers, which I've been trying to for like the last three months, I will do a subscriber special. And that's all for today's video. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Wild Mapper out.